time is wrong. Oh, okay, there. okay. Yeah. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Well, okay. Now you guys the, the link too, so you can get it. Okay. Yeah. Sure, you will. Could you show that first part again? Ready? Yep. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it almost helps if you freeze it on this. Yeah. Uh, can you? Yeah, you. That way, you get the freeze frame right there. There you go. Because that's what we're going to want to show anyway. More than Thank you. Okay, now we got to All right, everybody ready? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. And Erwin? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Major Adam Lee the third, A D A M L E E the third. On yesterday evening, December 8th, at 898 Oak Street, officers responded to a burglary call at that location, which actually turned out to be a home invasion. A witness that was at the location advised the officer that he saw three young black males running from the location wearing all black, and they jumped over a nearby fence on the Dunn Street side of the complex. After that, he did notice a, a male we uh, subsequently identified him as Jose Greer, laying on the sidewalk in a very injured state. Mr. Greer told the officer that he had jumped from his apartment balcony, which is approximately 30 feet above the ground, uh, in fear of his safety. Uh, these uh, Supposedly, uh, there was someone kicking at his door, and in fear of his safety, he went out to the balcony. Uh, I guess at some point uh, they did make entry and he subsequently jumped over the balcony which ended up uh, injuring him in a very serious situ in a very serious way. Uh, he went to the hospital and he died about six hours later in surgery. So at this point uh, we are trying to identify these three young men. We have video of them entering and exiting the building and so we would like the public's help in identifying those subjects. There's a $25,000 reward being offered from Crime Stoppers to help us solve this case. Uh, we really want to, to, to get the public's help and uh, make sure that, that we put that out there, that this reward money is available as soon as we can get someone to call us and tell us if, you know, if they can identify these young men. As you can see, one of them has a distinctive, uh, some writing on his hat, across his hat, can't tell really what it says at this point, and he has white uh, stripes down the black pants. He's seen in the front of the subjects as they're, as they're entering, and at the exit, he's the last person, appears to be the last person going out of the door with a backpack on his back. The other subjects have uh, tennis shoes uh, that are distinctively different from, from the last subject there. He has on dark co uh, colored shoes. The other two have on appear to be light colored tennis shoes. We did find some items that belonged to the to the victim, Mr. Greer, near the fence. There were some business cards there, as well as some change that was taken out of the apartment. So this that leads us to believe that these young men are significantly involved in the situation based on the witness accounts of them leaving the building and jumping over the fence at approximately the same area where the, the items belonging to Mr. Greer were found. Uh, 
So to be clear, the video is the apartment complex where the victim lives. Now, yes. Is, in, the, in the beginning of the video, you see one gentleman open the door. Yes. Are we to believe that maybe this guy lives in the building, has access to the building, and is letting his friends in? And, and then subsequently, the second shot of them leaving is that after the crime had been committed. Right. Don't know if he lives there, but it appears that he had some access prior to them, and he did let, let them into the building. That is a secure building. You have to have some sort of uh, key to get into the building. So uh, it appears that he was in there prior to them, the other two coming in. Yes. That's one with writing on his cap. Yes, he's the, the one with the writing on the cap. Uh, like I said, all I can make out is a U and a P possibly on, on, that, on that hat. But he appears to have let them in to he the building. He would have either access code or access card, right? Yes, that's correct. You have to have some sort of, of code to get in. It's or not follow somebody in, I guess. And, and, and is yes. this them running out after? The yes, this is the three of them leaving right about the time of the incident. And uh, believe it or not, we believe Mr. Greer landed uh, just outside that building to the right. You can see them sort of pause as they're going out. So we believe they would have had to have walked right past Mr. Greer as they were leaving. Which, which makes it even a, a worse situation for us because you know, they didn't, apparently didn't render him any, any aid whatsoever. What can you say about why they went to this third story apartment? Obviously, if somebody let him in, do you think they knew him personally or that somebody knew him? Because why go to this one guy's place? We don't have any idea of that. This, that'll all be a part of our investigation. Not sure why they specifically went to Mr. Greer's apartment. All we have is that uh, his, his apartment appeared to have been ransacked somewhat, uh, the draw, some drawers were pulled out, uh, his, 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 his bedding was in a disarray, and uh, so that appears to be something that they did while they were inside. What did they do with it? All we, all we know for sure, for certain, because we don't have Mr. Greer to tell us what they took, all we know for certain is that there was some change there, uh, a large amount of change, and his business cards, so I don't know what, what purpose that would have been. Did Greer live there alone? As far as we know, he did live alone at the location. And that was the only apartment hit last night? Yes, that's the only report of a, of a, of a home invasion or burglary from that location last Did night. Is there any indication how long the victim was on the ground before somebody called 911, before he was taken Mr. Greer, Mr. Greer called 911 himself, and he actually was conscious enough to, to tell the responding officer that, that he jumped in fear of his safety, that he was afraid that these, that these men may hurt him once they got inside the apartment. So, so uh, he, he, he basically jumped and ended up dying trying to, trying to save his life to keep him from uh, getting harmed by these people. Call being released? Is that at, some, at some point, we'll, we'll, we'll probably release that. Is we just haven't really gotten to that point yet. Whether they, you think you got the wrong apartment? Did you guys talk to the guys that lived there? Don't, the don't know that yet. All that will be a part of the investigation if, if it was some sort of a situation where they were actually targeting someone else. Right. Someone else, we will we'll have to look into Did that, of course. The Did they kick the apartment door? Yes, the door was, was, uh, was forced open. I don't know how. Okay. Uh, if, I can't say it was kicked open, but it was definitely a sign of force on the door. So, real quick, is the scenario then is uh, Mr. Greer, the victim, here sees people kicking in his door, somehow breaking in, flees for his right. own, jumps off the third story. Right. The balcony, the door, the door leading to the balcony is, is about, uh, about 15 feet, 15 to 20 feet directly in front of the, the door coming into the apartment. So Mr. Greer went out on the balcony. It's a very small balcony maybe only three or four adults could probably stand on the balcony comfortably and uh, at some point uh, he decided that it was it was worth it to, to try and get away by jumping as opposed to staying to wait and see what these guys were going to do to him. Was there anything of value found inside Greer's apartment? Yes, there were still items of value there. Like what? Televisions or jewelry, money? He's had a Yes. I didn't see you. This doesn't, I'm sorry, this, there's no indication of any kind of illicit activity there. There's no indication that, like that there was no, no indication that Mr. Greer was doing anything okay. other than, than at home, minding his own business so and, and these young do, men. What do you want? Uh, did the witnesses, I'd like to get a question if you guys don't mind. Did anybody, any of the witnesses say whether the suspects were armed? No. All we have is that, that at, the, at, the, at approximately the same time, that the, the incident occurred and we got the call and the officer arrived, a witness is saying that these three men, young men that you see on the video 
were exiting the building and jumped over a nearby fence and then in that area we found items belonging to Mr. Greer, money and, and some business cards. Tell them again how they can call Crime Stoppers. Yeah, yes, please uh, call Crime Stoppers. Uh, they'll have the, anyone from the public call Crime Stoppers if they have any information that will help to solve this case. And, and to reiterate, there's a $25,000 reward uh, for that Why purpose. 25000 in this case? Pretty high. That's pretty significant. Well, we have some contributions that have been made. Uh, some Family some members? Or who? Private, private okay. contributions that have been made to, uh, to raise it up to $25,000. Can you discuss the injuries that Mr. Greer sustained when he, when he fell? Or, it should be in the report. I mean, yeah. it, what led to his death? I mean, he's alive he, we, and then he's gone. Well, well there, was, there were several injuries listed there, uh, broken ribs, arms. Uh, I, don't, I don't have specifically the medical report, but he was pretty banged up. As you can imagine, someone would be from a 30-foot fall down onto concrete. And yet had enough wherewithal to call you guys? Because well, he did that he before he jumped. Is this a homicide investigation? Yes. And how old is he? How old? He is 51. He was 51 years old. Yeah. Did he have a record or anything? Did he have a yeah, record? Did he have a record? No, we, have, we don't have any information so, on that. I got one last thing. We got to get you on the news at 5. What do you want to say about the senselessness of this act? You've got a guy who jumps 30 feet, apparently not with a lot on him, apparently not a lot of valuable stake, and we could be wrong on that, but the pettiness of this thing... It's, a very, the, it's a very petty crime uh, that, this, that this man had to resort to jumping 30 feet, or he was willing to risk the injury that he knew that he would sustain from such a fall. Uh, to get away from what he thought may happen to him if he stayed in the apartment. So, so who knows uh, the, the mindset of, of a person being in that situation is something I would surely hate to be in. But in uh, the pettiness of the crime, based on what we found, the, the coins um, at we the fence, it, it doesn't, doesn't sound like uh, something that was worth it. We don't know if he walked off with four kilos of heroin. We don't know. All we know is that we recovered coins, right. and, and that's an unusual, yeah. petty it crime to, to still uh, change. All right. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. We'll send you the link in just a minute. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. 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 Thanks.